everyone. Welcome to today's session about mm -hmm. our community guide going solar. We have three speakers here today, Natalie, uh, Sanat, and uh, Randall. So uh, I would like to introduce our speakers and each of them are representing organization Sanat Portal is the founder and executive director of OC Goes Solar or OCGS, a 501c3 nonprofit organization with a mission to make solar energy and other clean technologies accessible and affordable for all residents throughout Orange County, especially in underserved communities. She's trained uh, in clean energy and sustainability, professional with over seven years of consulting experience, both in solar energy and building energy efficiency in the commercial and industrial sectors before establishing OCGS. Driven by profound passion of clean energy, she advocates for zero emission solutions in all facets of life. Um, we uh, also have Natalie Moral Morales Sandoval. She is the energy programs analyst um, and she's a seasoned professional with a background in environmental justice who holds a master's degree in public policy with an emphasis on urban planning from the University of California, Riverside. Natalie has joined the OCPA or the Orange County Power Authority's team as an energy programs analyst. She has an important role overseeing and expanding OCPA's energy program offerings, including customer rebates, incentives, and saving tools, which currently include OCPA's residential product marketplace. OHM Connect and community grant programs. She has made impactful contributions in her role as a engagement manager at Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator, where she led 10 community benefit pilots, introduced energy efficient technologies to environmentally underserved communities. Now, many of you know, uh, April is Earth Month. So it is a great time for us to uh, learn uh, about uh, clean energy, energy eff efficiency, and summer is coming up. So I think it's a timely talk for all of us to enjoy. So without further ado, I'm going to let uh, Sena, our first speaker, take it away. All right. Thank you, Zainab. Thank you for the introduction. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Earth Month. And for those of you who just finished celebrating Eid Mubarak, I say it, um, it I guess you say Eid Mubarak, right? For Eid That's Al correct. Yes, thank holiday, you. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you all for joining us. And uh, today we'll be talking a little bit about going solar with, with, with your community and, and, and more. Of course, we have Natalie from OC Power Authority. So, again, as Zainab said, my name is Sanait Forthol. Um, and I am the executive director of Osico Solar. We are a nonprofit, a 501c3 organization with an aim to simplify the process of going solar for all our Orange County residents. Joining me today is my colleague and the board chair, Randy Crane. Um, and I know our board secretary, Sharon Burke, uh, is supposed to join us. So she might be joining a little bit late. Um, additionally, as I said- Actually, um, let me interrupt. Sharon said she was stuck in a waiting room. Oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm here now. Oh, she's here. Right. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we are honored also to have Natalie Morales from OC Power Authority with us, who will be providing valuable insight into OC Power Authority's energy program and offerings. Uh, together, we are all excited to introduce you to our organization and um, to provide you with essential information about the benefits of clean energy and what um, um, you know, rebates and incentives are available for you. So without further ado, I would like to share my screen to start uh, the presentation. Here we go, okay. So why go solar? We covered, and of course being uh, Earth Month, the biggest thing is about saving the planet. Here's our table of content. I'll be talking a little bit about our organization, what we do, and what our goals are. And 
and then I'll cover a little bit about how solar works, how net energy metering work, and how time of use rate works for your electricity when you purchase it. Uh, we will discuss a little bit about questions to consider when you're going solar and talk a little bit what it takes to go through the installation process. And then we have a few checklists uh, for residents to consider when they plan to go solar. Um, this is if you're not participating in our program, but you want to do it on, by, on your own, we'll have a checklist to cover. And then at the end, we'll give you our contact information if you want to participate in our program um, or learn about um, our uh, offerings. Again, as I said, we were, um, we're a nonprofit established in 2017 with a mission to make solar energy affordable and accessible to all Orange County residents, particularly to low-income and underserved communities. Um, we, even though we were established in 2017, we were a very uh, loosely formed grassroots community group based on the University of California, Irvine faculty housing neighborhood, uh, helping basically all our neighbors going solar by simplifying the process, streamlining, streamlining and simplifying the process uh, for our neighbors. But um, a year, well, I think it's in 2018, around that time, we opened it up to include all Orange County residents. By 2019, we became a, a full-fledged nonprofit. We have three programs. The largest one is Solarize OC. Uh, we usually partner with uh, cities to conduct these programs. We've been partnering with the city of Irvine for the last two years. And our second program is called Solar on Multifamily Affordable Housing. It's a state-funded program where we partner with other nonprofits to bring the benefit of solar to low-income uh, um, affordable housing tenants in Orange County. Our third program is um, a flagship project that we, um, we run. Uh, we have an, one program that's going on right now in Santa Ana. We're helping... Uh, a small community farm have access to clean energy. We fundraise and try to provide the funding and the installation to the selected nonprofits. Why Solarize? Um, so our Solarize campaigns uh, empower community members. They reduce cost. Uh, and of course, the big one for us is reducing emission in our region. Uh, solarized programs are designed to be afford and to make the, the solar affordable and simplify the process and then also make it transparent because we all know that we get, you know, 20, 40 people knocking on our doors every year. So we try to make the process transparent without really sacrificing the quality. So we, we really focus on quality warranties and pricing. Well, as, um, we also secure community group discounts uh, for solar energy, battery storage, home EV chargers, and other technologies. Here are the key elements of the Solarize program. Uh, we have competitive contractor selection to be working under our Solarize program. We secure group discounts we negotiate warranties for solar panels, and we select, you know, great quality uh, products. Um, after the selection process, we have multiple community-wide solar workshops throughout the year. And after the workshops, we continue to provide support to all program participants. Basically, what I told you was. Um, our process, but here it's laid out just in steps. It, when we start our program, every year we prepare a, a request for proposal and send it out to all Orange County contractors, solar contractors. At the same time, we form a volunteer group of homeowners and subject matter experts to, uh, to help us select and screen the contractors that will be working under this program for that particular year. After the selection process, the contractors, uh, well, the contractors would be offering the services 
while we have our workshop set up, the contractors will be part of that workshop every single time we have workshops. And they offer uh, quotes, individual quotes to homeowners. Those are free of charge. And also they provide site services, site analysis for free. Um, this is the program for Solarize Irvine. We did in partnership with the city of Irvine for the year 2022 to 23 year. We had over 180 people that participated in the program and went solar under the program, which ended up being 1,466.85 kilowatt systems, which translates to, to 1.4 megawatt of solar energy installed for all these residents or for the city also. Um, the savings adds up to be on average 1,500 per household, which adds up for 180 people, $270,000 in one year and over 6,750,000 uh, over the life of the solar system, which is warranted for 25 years. This year, these are the companies we work with, IEKM Solar that's based in Orange County, Swell based in Los Angeles, Solar 360 also based in, in Orange County. Um, the mayor of Irvine, Farah Khan, is the biggest fan of our program. And as you can see, she has a nice quote and, um, you know, shout out for our program. These are pictures from some of our solar workshops. As you can see, we get a lot of people attending our workshops. A little um, testament from one of our program participants. It says, Osigo Solar dramatically lowered the time and energy needed to evaluate the solar installation. They prevented installation companies. They helped us make an informed choice. Oops informed choice that will benefit us and our community for years to come. This is from John and Max Chow from Aliso Viejo. Um, as I mentioned, our solar on multifamily affordable housing program, which is uh, the largest of its kind in the nation, that has a budget of $100 million a year and $1 billion over 10 years for the community. So we are working very hard with elected officials and property owners to bring these benefits of solar to low-income affordable housing um, residents in Orange County. This is the flagship project we told you about. All the money we fundraise, 100% of it goes towards the project. We also have a solar ambassador program. So people that participate in our program become solar ambassadors to help spread the word. High school students join us to spread the word and anyone in Orange County interested in joining, they can reach out to us to osigosolar.org or info at osigosolar.org backslash solar ambassador program. So now I'll talk a little bit about the technology. I wouldn't go in so much details, but just to explain that solar systems are incredibly simple. There are very few components. Uh, as you can see, the main one is our solar panels. As you can see on the roof, they are mounted on a racking system uh, that attaches to the roof. And the solar uh, system is connected to an inverter, as you can see on the side of the house, that inverter um, also changes, you know, the solar um, generated from the solar panels into a useful AC mode. And that part, um, once that is converted, the electricity that's generated goes into the house to provide energy for the home throughout the day. Whatever amount that's not used in the house goes back to the grid. As you can see the grid here, uh, through the meter goes back as a credit to the homeowner. A little um, explanation how solar panels convert sunlight to direct current electricity. And then the inverter that we saw converts that electricity, DC electricity to AC <clears throat> electricity. 
uh, which I would like to mention that all of our appliances in our homes use AC, and that's the major reason that it gets converted. Um, your home consumes electricity produced by the solar system, and whatever is left, as I said, goes to the grid as a form of credit. Batteries. Um, batteries are becoming you know, more and more important. I actually have to say now since 2024 have become integral part of the solar system. So getting solar without battery actually makes it very difficult to save money. So battery storage are very critical, even though they increase the cost of the solar system, uh, but it allows you to stay on when there is power outrage, out outage, um, Typically, one battery installed in a home can provide up to three to four small circuits, which are your fridge, your lighting, um, all other small things like your computer. You can back up those systems. But if you want to back up your entire household, you may need multiple batteries installed in your house. Um, these batteries also can provide additional money savings because they could be used during expensive hours. Um, we'll talk a little bit about time of use rate and you can see in Southern California between four o'clock and 9 p.m. electricity rates are expensive. So if you have a, ba a battery system, you can um, store energy during the daytime when the rates are cheap and discharge during the peak hours, which are between 4 and 9 p.m. to save money. Uh, obviously, um, you still get benefit by getting 30% tax credit on installing batteries. So the federal government basically pays 30% of the cost for you. And also there is a little bit of incentive from uh, the state of California, the program called Self-Generation Incentive Program. Um, they are very difficult to get or take time, but that's still available for homeowners, especially to low-income residents. There is actually plenty of money uh, to offset the cost of batteries. So net energy metering. As we spoke, when um, the energy generated from the solar panels goes into the house to provide energy throughout the day, but the excess amount that's not used goes back to the grid as a form of net energy metering, meaning you use it and whatever is left goes to the grid and gives you credit. Um, so um, whether you consume it or not, that credit accumulates. If you don't use it tonight, if you don't use it tomorrow, um, that credit just rolls over. And um, if you are a, a customer of OC Power Authority, you would learn that is actually uh, kind of uh, calculated on a monthly basis. Uh, and Southern California Edison customers won't see that calculation every month, but they will see it at the end of the year called uh, a true up time. Um, I'm sure I'm dumping a lot of information. If anybody wants to interrupt me to ask questions, please feel free. Um, and these are um, items that we usually cover during our workshops and we go in details. So you can ask questions now or later. Um, uh, when we put the solar system, can I ask a question, please? Sure. When we install this solar system, what about the direct electricity that we are getting right now? Does that get disconnected? No, it doesn't. You, you will always be connected to the grid. But you have that net energy metering that I talked about, you know, the, the meter you have uh, would show, like, if you generate energy, and so when you draw electricity from the grid, from, like, they say, from Southern California Edison, um, your meter is is moving forward, charging you, like, per kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. But when you generate solar, your meter starts to run backwards, because oh. you're not buying electricity from the grid. But the advantage of staying connected to the grid is if there is a power outage or your system fails, you always mm -hmm. have energy to buy from your electricity uh, provider. Okay, does it get uh, switched on on its own or you have to 
you'll be off without electricity if the if something fails, you know, if this solar you, system fails. Yeah, so you don't have to do anything when the system is set up. It's actually your utility, the South, Southern California Edison comes to your house and checks out the system and approves it and turns on the system for you. Okay. So you're always connected. You don't have to do anything at all. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? So as I mentioned earlier, these are um, time of use rates, like almost everyone I think is now on a time of use rate in our area. Um, so as you can see, these are the charges you get um, during weekdays on the left and weekends on, on the right. Uh, as you can see, the time shows between eight and four is the, you know, the cheapest. Uh, 63 cents between four and nine. So that's like almost almost tripled. Um, and then at night from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. again, the price drops again. So the only time you have to remember about not using so much energy is between 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. and 9 p.m. Um, another thing I would like to mention is even though rates are cheap at night, we always say pe to people also use your heavy appliances in the daytime if you have solar panels because you're generating clean energy and use, you're using clean energy during that time to run your machines, washing machines, cooking, cleaning, you know, air conditioning, all those things. At, at nighttime, there isn't a whole lot of clean energy unless it's stored in a battery. Um, the energy you buy from the utilities is actually dirty energy, which is from, you know, gas fired plants. So always maximize your energy use in the daytime. Any questions on time of use rates? Weekends. Does this differ uh, from county to county, or is this the same across the board? No, it it diff Well, the difference is just between utilities. So, if you have Southern California Edison, uh, or if you have OC Power Authority, um, the rates are going to be the same for all the customers. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are up north or in San Diego, the utilities have their own different rates. So it's based on your provider, basically. Got it. Thank you. Sure. So uh, a little bit about cost. Um, solar is priced per watt but your electricity generation from solar and all is kilowatt hours. So um, the system size itself is sized by kilowatts, but the energy produces kilowatt hours. Um, Price-wise, the average price of solar nationally is right now about $3 per watt. This is before you get credit from the federal government. But and under our program, for, exa for example, this year, our average cost for a top-of-the-line premium solar panels has been $2.40 per watt. So you can see that, you know, the community savings that we were able to secure. So a couple of metrics to consider. Um, always just pay attention to how long it takes you to recoup your investment, meaning your payback period. Uh, right now, typically, I think this is it says seven to 10. Uh, it's because it used to be a little bit less, but now because you're buying batteries and batteries cost a lot more um, than the solar panels, um, one battery could cost you between 10 and um, 15, you know, $14,000, $15,000. Um, solar panels are pretty affordable. The whole system could cost probably between ten and fourteen thousand uh, dollars. So considering the whole picture and then seeing your payback period is really important. Um, of course, the electricity rates also go up um, on average about five to ten percent a year, sometimes even more. Um, so all those. Um, uh, factors affect your return. 
here's a very simple uh, cost analysis. Like if a, a house uh, installs a 6.15 kilowatt system, the price will be, according to our pricing 240, the total cost of the solar installation would be 14,760. Once you account for the 30% tax credit, which is $4,428 off of the $14,760, your price will drop down quite a bit. As you can see, the solar price will be 10,332 after your tax credit. Obviously you have to have tax appetite. Uh, you have to be you must owe something to the federal government to be able to claim that one. So, uh, uh, so we always say when it comes support. to tax credit, please consult your soul. I mean, your accountant because they are well versed in this tax credit business. Um, so, um, if you buy batteries, um, the solar panels come to 10,000. And if you have a small battery added to it, this is more like a five kilowatt system. And the, you know, the bottom line, your total price may end up being 16,900, 982. Um, another great thing that you could do with your solar panels is EV charging. Everyone seems to be interested in purchasing an EV or curious about EVs. EVs save you a ton of money. Of course, they are, pretty pricey up front, but if you have solar panels, you can charge your EVs directly from your solar panels and saving yourself money on gas. Um, so that lowers your costs out of pocket for gas um, and also you're driving on clean power, um, you know, day in, day out. And you probably all know there is about $7,500 tax credit on EVs and also EV charging plugs also have some um, rebates available right now. Um, questions to consider when you go solar, what kind of warranties come with the system? Usually product warranties are about 25 years. That doesn't mean 25 years later that your solar panels stop working. Uh, solar panels could work 40, 50 years, but the warranties, like everything else, um, have warranties that the company uh, provides you. So this is a manufacturer's warranty. Uh, labor warranty uh, is required by the state about 10 years, but for our organization, when we kind of screen contractors, we negotiate warranties. We've been able to secure between 15 and 25 years warranty. Um, again, warranties are as good as the company is in business, right? So if the company is no longer in business, that warranty is no good or does not help anyone. And solar panels don't require any maintenance. So you don't have to worry once they are installed, the solar contractors will be monitoring. You will be monitoring. You will have an app on your phone where you could see the generation and it's actually very, very easy to operate and um, know about it. And solar panels, you can buy them cash, which is the cheapest form. If you have the money, you can take out a loan or some companies provide power purchase agreements where the company owns the solar system um, and you just pay a monthly fee to, to, towards the solar system, which, which usually is not a great thing for a homeowner because the company gets to take the 30% tax credit and they depreciate the the equipment and and will be collecting a lot of money for the next 25 years. So we don't usually recommend, but some people may need that if they don't have the upfront cost. So these are the things to consider that uh, finding a solar installer, like if you don't plan to participate in a program like Solarize programs that we have, Osigo Solar has, if you want to go on your own, it's always a good idea to search for contractors and also get referral from your neighbors and friends. And we recommend you get at least three uh, proposals and make sure you compare apples to apples. 
So when you compare proposal, just compare the price, what are the equipments, the brands, the warranties, um, and then the installer, the company, the solar company's work history. Uh, timeline, it takes about between two, two, two to four months, uh, sometimes longer to get solar system installed. But actually the whole process of putting it on your roof takes mostly one day for our larger systems, possibly a second day. Um, this is a checklist that we prepared. Um, when you go solar on your own, get familiar with the technology, um, the economics, and research solar installers, as I said, or you know, sign up uh, um, with our programs and we can invite you to participate in our uh, workshops and talk to the program selected contractors. Uh, solicit customer proposals that at least three of them compare proposal between installers, select installers whose proposals best meet your needs. Because some companies will just tell you, get this, you know, a size you may not need, it may be bigger, some make it small, so it won't sound expensive, but it ends up not covering your energy needs. Um, of course, check your contract before signing it, make sure that you understand what uh, the warranty is providing you, what kind of contract you're getting. And you don't have to worry about permitting, installing things. And uh, even if you have a homeowners association, the contractor is responsible for all that work. Um, if you need more help, we're always here. Please reach out to us, ocgosolar.org or email us at info at ocgosolar.org. Thank you very much. I will now stop sharing and invite Natalie to do her presentation. I had a question. Yes. Uh, is there a similar program in Riverside County that you're offering all this oversight? Um, not that I know of. Um, I know there is one, I'm not even sure if they're still doing it in Santa Barbara. There is an organization called uh, California Environmental Council. Uh, they might have shifted towards doing also mostly uh, nonprofits and businesses, but they have done it for several years. But Riverside, no. Um, sometimes we had people, I mean, if the solar contractors are willing, we never discriminate against people who would live in different counties. We had people that came all the way from Los Angeles County to participate in our solar programs. Uh, if the solar contractor is willing to do the drive and do the installation. So feel free to reach out. We can help. Thank you. All right. All right. I will start sharing the screen. Um, okay. I hope everyone can see. Um, Hello, good morning, or almost afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Natalie Morales Sandoval. I am the Energy Programs Analyst at Orange County Power Authority. Um, a quick overview of what OCPA for short um, is, is a, they're part of your energy bill, especially in Irvine, um, Irvine opted into 100% renewable energy. So in your Edison bill, you will see two line items. One is on the generation side. And if you are opted into OCPA, you will see something around the lines of saying OCPA. If not, it will just say Edison for both, but you will always get the same bill. Um, it will show from Edison. So that's that's a little bit of what where we come from. And so any of the extra funding we, we get or revenue, we invest back into um, our customers through our customer energy programs. And so I'll go through a little bit of our programs that we have now and um, a little bit of what we will hope to have in the future. So move on. So um, um, Connect, this is the first one. It's a free online platform that helps uh, our customers save energy by reducing their electric usage during high um, 
peak times of demand. And uh, right here are, to my left, it shows that once you um, opt in or join in to this program, you get a $50 credit. And people actually could make like money or get some you know, um, gift cards from it, depending on how much you use it. But basically it's a texting platform as well. And they thought, you know, hey, this is the peak time. You should reduce your your um, usage of electricity and it helps just um, in environmentally like how many people are on the grid or using the grid at a time. So this is one um, energy um, efficient um, program that we have. Um, and if you have questions on any of the programs, I'm happy to share my contact information for after as well. Um, the next one is um, OCPA's Residential Marketplace. So this is where we have um, discounts and rebates for energy efficient products. Um, you know, uh, it's so it's on our website. And as long as you're a customer, you'll be eligible to get the discounts that range from like $20, um, you know, discount to 50 to, you know, depending on what, what it is. And we have different promotional items. Right now with Earth Month, we have a free shipping on LEDs, um, bulb pack, um, and we just added actually a lawnmower to our site as um, California since this year banned the use of or selling of um, uh, fuel fuel lawnmowers and lawnmower every, anything at the lawn um, is now going to have to be electric. So this is just uh, you know us helping out um, any discounts we have. I think that lawnmower specifically is about forty bucks cheaper than if you get it um, anywhere else. But it's just another opportunity to get energy efficient products. Our popular ones are smart thermostats and air purifiers as well. Uh, but yeah, if uh, you basically go on the site and get any discounts, it'll show you exactly the, the pricing for it. Um, yeah, moving on and to our reinvesting into the community. So as we talked about our, uh, you know, just educational grants or it's called Bright Futures Grant Program. Um, which allowed um, for $70,000 as a collective to four amazing organizations to really have creative and innovative ideas to educate communities about the benefits of renewable energy, including the Seagull Solar in the sense of, you know, they do amazing workshops similar to this, but we know even in the hundreds of, of folks um, and also online um, share outs. Um, to community about solar, about any any renewable energy. Um, another highlight um, is Pretend City. If you all know about Pretend City, they, it's a mini city for uh, children, uh, usually around the kindergarten to elementary age, but they're setting up an actual solar uh, system in one of their um, cities or, or, or houses and they will show kids you know what that technology is for and how helpful it is actually so it's really great to just share out the um you know what what this is all about and we hope to continue this type of grant with more organizations and more more folks benefiting from this just for the education about renewable energy and and ocpa in general as well and then we have uh, anyone um, in electricity, you could really get uh, low-income customer programs through CARE, FARA, and Medical Baseline. So if you qualify for any of those programs, you could either get a discount or a rebate on your electricity bill. And um, there's more about that on their website as well. Moving on to the future of energy programs. So um, it's really, I've put in three categories, um, our community power plan, which I'll talk about in our next slide a little bit more. But then uh, the next thing is clean energy educational opportunities. So that's, you know, a Bright Futures Grant 2.0. I want to keep it more longstanding. So um, right now we're in the works of doing um, the second round of it, but also want to continue it and keep it um, successful as um, we're right now in the third quarter 
of this grant and we want to see um, more folks coming out and just learning a lot more about this as this is a new topic, um, so it's definitely needed. Um, and so if you know of an organization or that might be interested in the future, definitely like let them know about this possible opportunity coming up soon. And then um, the third bullet point here is on our e-bike safety incentive. So this is something that I'm working on really closely um, coming up hopefully in the late summer is for a incentive program that includes, you know, um, a discount for electric e bikes from our local bike shops. Um, and basically folks will be able to um, get this discount as electric bikes are really popular. More people are using it just to go to school or, you know, for their everyday commute or even just recreationally. Especially in Irvine has so many beautiful trails you could go on. Um, and this is another opportunity for folks that don't want to pedal as hard to use an electric bike, um, but, you know, might not have the full means for it because electric bikes are expensive. But we understand the big concern is safety. So everyone that would get the incentive needs to complete um, a safety training for it, uh, for an electric bike to make sure that folks, you know, are safe and also have a helmet. So that's um, one type of program that's a little bit different than, you know, um, decarbonization within a building, but it's still within, you know, <laughs> as EV cars are popular, e-bikes are getting popular too. Uh, but that's just a, a one exciting program that we have coming up. And then um, I wanted to share about our community power plan, which is coming soon. Um, this is really just for member cities to really, uh, for us to understand what are the needs um, for customer program preferences and just the energy needs in general. So we'll do more of like a survey analysis and needs-based assessment um, in fall um, to winter, and then get that, you know, report hopefully early to mid uh, next year. And then in the summer, we would really invest in more programs and hopefully invest maybe in more discounts for solar, you know, whatever comes out of that report as a need. That's basically what we uh, plan to do with the uh, funding that we have for customers. So always um, open for any input. If you have any questions, that's kind of what we're working on as we're reinvesting those funds into programs um, for all things in energy. Um, and that's it for me, if you have any questions. Stop sharing. All right, Oliver, do you have any questions? This is a great time. Go ahead, Sister Hakika. Uh, are you finding that more people are buying the e-bikes and taking the training uh, for the e-bikes? Well, so um, this e-bike program hasn't started. It should start um, late summer. We really want to uh, market it and start marketing it at Sickle Irvine if you haven't heard about it. So it's going to be May 4th and that where folks can ride their bikes or walk uh, along the, um, the trails of Irvine. Um, in terms of our folks taking the e right now, you could get buy an electric bike just as you go. But we have heard throughout California and, you know, the rest of the country that there's um, a lot of issues when folks don't know the rules of the road, when an e-bike, so stuff like that. Just It's different than a regular bike, so it's good to get a practice of it. Um, but I have worked on many projects of folks um, getting an e-bike at low cost or reduced cost with a safety training, and it has been helpful. It has been successful. Um, and, you know, we want to support our local bike shops as well. So it's uh, it's part of that. But the, our bike shops are also sharing concerns of the safety element. So adding that is helpful. And with the discount that it will have, I think folks will take the safety course. There's um, on, on a free online version in-person options. So there's there's different opportunities. So if you know of anyone that might be interested, feel free to let them know that this is coming. Um, I don't have any um, flyers or anything like that yet, but I'm happy to share my contact information in the chat as well. Well, 
Natalie, I have a question for you. Um, could you tell um, the attendees that what are the member cities of OC Power Authority? Because Zainab, I'm not sure if everyone is from Fullerton or other cities that is attending today. Uh, we have a mixture of people from Orange County, LA County, and Riverside. In the, um, so yeah, it's always good to know. Please share. And this is being recorded, so there will definitely be an audience for who this is relevant information for. So please share. Definitely. So tonight, to your question, um, our member cities right now are Irvine, Buena Park, Fullerton, and, and Huntington Beach. Um, and so th they would qualify for all those programs up to um, that, that are active right now. Um, but in terms of LA, there's a lot of programs. I um, came from LA Clean Tech Incubator. Um, if you have any specific questions of, you know, your region, um, there is a, another CCA called Clean Power um, Alliance that has similar programs. So I would definitely check them out um, because they would probably serve you. In terms of Riverside, I don't think there is a CCA. Um, I might be mistaken, but um, there's there's uh, some programming in San Bernardino County, which is kind of close um, if, in case that helps anyone here. So a question just of general interest to everyone, you know, when we receive that knock on the door, um, you know, somebody trying to let us know about a program or a service of this nature to, you know, kind of ask us what is our electricity bill? How can we, uh, uh, you know, it's obviously a company. How, what would be the next steps when something like that happens? Any any takeaways for our attendees? Because I think a lot of our seniors do end up getting phone calls and knocks on those doors. Um, so please let us know what is a better informed way to go about it. I would say, I mean, the, the reason for us starting the organization OC Go Solar was that particular reason. <laughs> Basically, a lot of people were frustrated that they were getting a lot of people knocking on doors and telling them there are free solar programs, government programs, discount programs, sign up with me and you'll pay nothing out of pocket kinds of things. So um, what we found out in our own neighborhood was like a lot of people were ready to go, but this created so much confusion and stress that people just opted not to deal with the solar program. I mean, it's installation. So what we always suggest is go with, if you're interested in solar, find out, learn more about it or, you know, reach out to us. We can educate you on it. Um, you don't have to participate or you can participate in our programs. But the other way to do it is just learn from your neighbors who want solar, talk to them who their contractor was, what they like and they didn't like about them, ask your friends, families. Um, so we usually discourage to dealing with people that knock on doors. Mm, great point. Now, some of the attendees here have gone solar, I believe. So anyone wants to share uh, uh, their experiences or lessons learned or whatnot, please unmute yourselves if you are muted. Do you want to share something, uh, Mr. Ramjan? Yes. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. So I I install. I had. I'm in Los Angeles area. I'm actually I'm in the city of La Mirada. And I installed solar on my system, my house. Uh, it was it went kind of negative. The deal was the the guy who did the installation went bankrupt, and I'm still dealing with the bank trying to resolve my loan. But I had, but I want to share with the team is you have to do your homework, check it out, check the companies out, and um, but I went overboard. What I did is I had somebody come and look at my roof, and they gave me an estimate of my roof being about maybe five ten years. So I said I just replaced the whole roof because I don't know why the, about it after the solar. And I also went. Uh, I went to the limit of my panel. The electrical company came in, Southern Electric. They came and did an assessment of my panel, and they said, "Well, you need uh, you know 150 amp panel." And I said, "I want I need 200 because I'm running a solar, and I'm planning to charge you know my cars 
uh, my EV cars, if I, I don't have one right now, but I'm planning to have one for me and my wife. So we're trying to charge these cars. And also the battery is very important. I installed a solar system in my, uh, my the home of my son in Grand Rapids. And there we didn't have much permits because we in the farmlands. So we built it all by ourselves. Uh, I got a controller, I got a battery guy, I, I did all that, we did our homework and we installed it ourselves. But be aware of how you pick your equipment because you may deal with people who are flaky. Uh, we had a battery vendor that wasn't that good and we had to uh, you know, abandon the battery vendor. And so we designed our own battery system. But just so you know, do your homework and make sure you're dealing with reputable people and don't sign any contracts until you know the bottom line, you know exactly what you're getting. You have to talk to people around, verify uh, because you may get shafted hmm. and now what is your electricity bill after all that Z no zero so also let me just clear that i'm a sun electric so your bill will never go to zero right i mean i'm uh -huh. generating enough energy uh, you know I, my jacuzzi you know, you know I, I disconnected anyway so i'm generating enough, enough energy so my net net bill is zero but there's a man mandatory charge for for ho hooking up to the system it's around 12 dollars. so my bill runs around 12 dollars a month is because that's a mandatory charge that you cannot get credit for that but whatever i generate it's going to the bank and then my my year will expire in august and then uh, me and uh, some California Electric will sit down and we'll discuss what to do, what to do the credit. But mm -hmm. there is a charge. Just remember that. And then mm -hmm. your bill, your, your solar engine doesn't offset that charge. There's a mandatory charge, a connection charge. You have to be connected to the grid and there's a charge. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, uh, our dear speakers, did you, do you have any um, insights to what was shared or... Do you think, uh, you know, Mr. Ramjan went about it correctly? Was given, you know, um, in his case, it looks like the company went bankrupt, um, but it is a challenge. Yes. Any insights, uh, Sana or Natalie? I mean, just out of curiosity. Um, I mean, I, Randy, do you want to, I mean, I, I, in talking, I haven't invited my colleagues here. <laughs> yes, yes. It's lovely course. when you're talking. Yes. Um, well, a couple of things. I think that um, we would have helped the gentleman if uh, we had been available to him, because that's basically what we do here is we try to make it simple. Mm -hmm. but we, we not only educate about sort of the decisions that he just suggested you need to make, but we also vet the contractors. So we look at their finances, we look at their record, we look at their um, you know, ratings. We uh, have a community uh, committee that does this together from all around in this year, in the case of the city of Irvine. Mm -hmm. um, and we interview them in person. Mm -hmm. So we try to very much avoid the situation that you ran into, which is we, because we do take somewhat of a look at their finances and make sure they're a stable company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been an issue in the industry, though. It's not that unusual to hear about these solar installers going out of business, particularly this last year, because business has gone down because they changed the way that you get credit for that excess production that tonight was talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say my, my situation was um, much better because I went through the OCGO solar process before I joined the board. And, uh, you know, once I, it took me a while to understand how this all went together. And there's a lot of information there and and I'm an overeducated person. So it's it's like, you know, it's it's just not simple, a simple thing to, to understand at the very beginning. Maybe if you're an electrical engineer, but otherwise it takes some thinking about it. And once kind of I added it up, it was a pretty, pretty easy decision to make. And I could do it with some confidence that the installers would, would give us a good deal. And um, so that was four years ago, five years ago. System is paid for itself. Uh, I also replaced my furnace with a heat pump. So my heating and cooling is all electric. I got an electric car last year. And um, you're quite right that there's a monthly connection charge, but I overproduce enough that I just don't pay for electricity anymore. In fact, I got a little check at the end of the year from uh, OC Power Authority. So, um, uh, so, so that's the kind of system we're trying to offer is for people that, uh, you know, there are risks to doing, doing it on your own. You might run into problems and we're trying to help you avoid that. 
and also explain it to you clearly enough so you know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Hope that helps. Yeah. So I'd like to make a comment that that gentleman that he's made. Uh, the, the the program that's in the OC Go Power is really cool. I mean, I haven't looked at it. Uh, unfortunately, I looked at it late. I already decided to pull the trigger. But uh, they, uh, in our community, we need to alert them and educate them that this is how you should uh, go forward when you're going for solar. Is connect to people, uh, connect with the people like the OC group that we mentioned right here, who who do the vetting out and so on, and it's going to help them reduce their risks and also reduce their cost. So, uh, you know, I like right. this program and I think um, we should support these guys. Yes, there you go, there you go. And that's exactly what we're here to help um, where we can and uh, bring this information and knowledge that is so important um, for our, uh, yep. our attendees because at the end of the day, the best thing is educating ourselves. Yes. Um, so thank you. We are at time. I, I respect the time of our speakers. Thank you so much for all of you being here today. I hope we all take home some good, important information and please spread the word. I will share the recording for you to review with your families. And um, uh, Sanad, I uh, really appreciate you bringing this information and knowledge and all your board members who are attending. And, uh, and Natalie, thank you for your time. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of the day. All of Community Services is a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Southern California that provides culturally appropriate services to seniors, their family, and the community. Through its physical and virtual interactive programs, Olive engages participants in a variety of ways that promotes health and well-being. To learn more about Olive Community Services, to get involved, or to make a donation, please visit www.olivecs.org or email info at olivecs.org. Be a change maker and together, let's live learn and thrive.